Okay, I'm roll rolling. In three, two, one. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the Alif podcast. Today I have the honor of um, having over with me the great John Saville. How are you, sir? I'm good. Yeah. And uh, it's been quite a journey of us together. Oh, exactly. Yeah. yeah. We've, We've been recording and working in the studio. Yeah, we got acquainted through Jasir, I believe. Through Jasir, yeah, exactly. And uh, worked on Sir Khwab. We were, you know, lucky to have you on that project. Um, and you know you've been a part of the jamming and just the whole alif community but uh, let's why don't we start with because you are a proper veteran of of the scene um so maybe we start with as is tradition with these podcasts you know your beginnings and how you got into music okay, my beginnings let's say okay you can see ever since childhood actually my my father was a musician too so so there was always music around the house but mm-hmm. they never necessarily wanted me to get into music so they right. was like you you got to go to school do you focus on your academic stuff and yeah. but i was like don't take the hard was, road like don't us don't take the hard road <laughs> yes, exactly you know but i was kind of rebellious and like while in school i formed my form bands on the side mm. and then i joined my school band so back then i got to play saxophone oh wow clarinet and saxophone mm-hmm. so then i used to meet people around and then i i took a liking to keyboards because yeah. it's like harmonic yeah kind of the whole like, world at your exactly, fingertips exactly the whole world at your fingertips you know? <laughs> so what what instrument did your father play uh, he was a keyboard player like a, a pianist and this thing and he was more into jazz and stuff mm-hmm. and so matlab from a young age you had i had the guitar, records I was, I was, playing around the house and exactly stuff. yeah Yeah, yeah, I had all kinds of music and mm-hmm. like I remember listening to Chick Corea when I was very young, you know, Chick Corea and Herbie Hancock. Yeah. My father introduced me to it. He said, that's kind of music you need to listen to if you want to like yeah. become yeah. something. And, and was his fair parents also into music or uh, did his, he? Uh, actually, uh, like, uh, uh, no, his parents weren't into music and such, but they all played piano. Right. Right. Like uh, back then, because uh, it was kind of the norm, you know, every yeah. family had a piano in the house and mm. So somebody either played piano or violin or something. So was the first instrument that you tried on an actual organ? It was yeah. an organ, a keyboard. Yeah. Okay, and uh, but an electronic one or, or uh, like electronic, electronic keyboard? Yeah. Electronic yeah. keyboard. So did you have a, a physical piano though in the house? Uh, I don't remember one, but I remember we had it in like the neighbors' houses, and right? As well as and some mm-hmm. relatives and all that. So I'd go there and I'd just mm. kind of tinker around on keys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So eventually you basically decided that this is I decided that this is the instrument I want to stick to yeah. Mm-hmm. I ventured through many instruments like guitar and bass and yeah yeah. 
I mean, when you're, I mean, I've noticed you of often showing us bass lines and <laughs> bass stuff. Lines. So clearly exactly, you're yeah. well acquainted. I mean, with that all comes from here, too, exactly. Because you know, like you, you're on, on piano, like you're playing your bass, you're playing yeah. your harmonic structures, yeah. rhythm, melodies and yeah. everything on yeah. that. Yeah. So I guess that all comes out of there. So did you ever have any music lessons? Uh, I Actually, I had my basic music lessons where I learned how to read mm-hmm. in, in the school band. Okay. In school band. Because we had this army teacher. Where, like He was from the army. An ex-army officer or mm-hmm. something. And mm-hmm. he was a musician. So mm-hmm. his teachers are basic. He was very strict. He's like literary hit us on our wrists. And proper regimented. Stuff. Exactly. <laughs> proper regimental. Like, you know. <laughs> but that's rare. I mean, you know, music oh. schooling in Pakistan exactly. is not... Exactly. Like, uh, back then, there was, totally, uh, there was no like, kind of music schooling. The concept of uh, music schooling. And mm. But among your peers and stuff, were you... Um, mm. Like, was it common for people to have uh, some background music amongst the people, you know? Quite a few did up? have, yeah. yeah. There were a couple of saxophonists and guitarists mm. and all who, uh, and, and, uh, and especially pianists. Yeah. All read music and stuff and wow. had their basic training. Mm-hmm. So, what do you think in terms of, um, I mean, I guess we'll get to oh. this a bit later in more detail, oh. but like, do you think having that formal education in terms of being able to read made a massive difference uh, for you or did you start picking only, things up might, by ear it might only help but say if you're having a music discussion or yeah. if you're te- teaching music or something yeah. which I also do like on yeah. the side yeah. and, but I don't think I think you have to have like a really trained good ear. ear for a yeah. trained ear for music yeah so that's the primary thing. Like the, that's for many musicians, even abroad. Like you see a lot of jazz musicians. Mm-hmm. They, they all go with a year. Like they'll play something and yeah. Knowing so, the yeah. theory is one thing. Knowing the theory is one thing. Yeah, exactly. is the, the main practice thing. is the main thing. Yeah, yeah, bilkul. So, what was your first memories of like your first bands and stuff? Okay, first band was okay. Like maybe back when I was around ten or eleven, <laughs> and we used to play talent. Like oh, back then, we used to have these talent shows in school and yeah. the churches and stuff. So yeah. I used to go and play. So I remember playing this one. Hall in the church or somewhere it was and mm-hmm. so uh, the rest of the guys are all scared so they were standing behind the curtain backstage <laughs> and it's just a drummer and me on stage you know and uh, like I started uh, like, you know, we were playing some songs and I, I uh, the guitarist uh, his cable broke or something and oh. I had to play the lead solos and everything like I had a small synth with me and oh wow so <laughs> and that's what, were you playing covers? On stage and maybe you just in covers yeah. and what kind of music this was like back in the day like the good I'd say like the healthy pop you had back then in mm. like the 80s and 90s like uh, pop was much more musical much more musical days. back then <laughs> no, back then like you had some good pop because it had uh, funk groups in it funk and yeah. stuff and yeah like Earth, Wind and Fire and stuff like that uh, I mean exactly. I, I still clear the old progressive over yeah. <laughs> here exactly, exactly. Oh, pop. reggae and you know, yeah. Bob Marley and stuff and yeah yeah and so, like, at what point did you then get into the professional scene? Okay, the professional scene, and I could say, I think in my late teens or like a early twenties, that's when I started playing session with bands, and people started approaching me, you know, like we mm-hmm. need a keyboard player, and mm-hmm. we can't find one. So I said, okay, like, why not just take it seriously? You know? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and so, what was like the first, you know, relatively better known act that you? played with you got more shows with or something okay when I started playing like the mainstream scene, yeah, yeah, yeah okay I'll say okay there was this band back then uh, I don't know if you know about them but, you know Milestones and I've heard so, yeah, I've heard the name yeah. but obviously there's, this guy, there's Ziyad, very limited was, actually, footage Ziyad was my friend Ziyad and Ali Tim they were both my friends okay so I kind of yeah, I used to jam with them and then we fought, uh, they, had, they had formed this band mm-hmm. but I was sessioning with many bands and after that there was this band called like a uh, there was there was this guy from Final Cut uh huh you know, Rizwan Khan. Yes, yes. And so, then he formed a band called Sentinel together. Mm-hmm. Four of us, like four or five, four or five members. Mm-hmm. I can't even remember the others. You know, yeah, so yeah. like way back and mm-hmm. so that and that worked for a while. Like we played, did some battles of bands and okay. And at that point, was the original material that you guys had, or oh, were still covers? We were doing a lot of covers, but mm-hmm. we also working on original. But then the band split up because mm-hmm. due to very various differences mm-hmm. and that's uh, some uh, some members left mm-hmm. I think one migrated abroad or something and yeah. yeah yeah then we all got caught up in our own stuff and yeah well one of the main uh, I guess uh, ways I've heard of you is, is huh. through you know hearing that you used to play with Amir Zaki Amir Zaki was so, a very good friend of mine so very old at friend at what point did he enter the equation in your okay he, I'd say he 
entered it and say in, in in 96 was when we really started meeting up and jamming mm-hmm. together like mm-hmm. we had known each other we before, before that was just like kind of yeah you know, greeting or wishing each other a time and yeah. greeting each other and all. but yeah. we started jamming like since 96 when i went to his place and mm-hmm. and uh, then we formed this jazz band mm-hmm. and um, um, so like with him it was fun playing because he could play various instruments too and he was really course. good on bass and yeah. and guitar yeah 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 so that's where i started focusing more towards the jazz side. i i started getting out of rock and mm. ha it, it seems like the the entry point for most players around here huh. is the rock you know? rock exactly yeah. and jazz the kami log point pa kami log and exactly because see we didn't have a music scene around here no clubs around to go to where you could hear jazz musicians playing yeah and so like and rock would kind of like at that age to like when you younger it was kind mm-hmm. of you say elevate mm-hmm. me to one yeah but you had had some in like uh, as you said some uh, uh kya kehte hain your ears had heard some of this jazz stuff the jazz stuff, yeah so Chikori i was kind of stuff exactly from an earlier age yeah so and then i uh, plus i used to play like a few duke and uh, duke ellington tunes dave mm. brubeck and stuff like that mm. and so and So, so so walk us through what it was like in a jam session with Amir Zaki. Okay so with Amir Zaki you get first you're going to remind him like okay and I'm going to form this band so we played something he was like kind of he was even blown away or we like you're someone serious you're into like what I want you know yeah. what I'm looking for and yeah I mean I heard his get up playing his tone and I said man this is it like you know yeah you could go a long way yeah and yeah we had like kind of a love hate relationship you know Amir Zaki and myself like, we were mm. very close friends and but mm. there were times when we wouldn't agree on stuff and mm. we'd split up break up and again we'd meet up for a couple mm. of months and mm. And at this but time was, was Gumby also in this in the situation. He was also there. Yeah, yeah. he was there too. And on and drums and all that. But usually then, uh, it would be him on drums. He was on drums. Yeah. yeah. And we had someone else on bass at the time. I think it was this guy Bonnie we had taken for mm-hmm. a while. Mm-hmm. And uh, but then Gumby was also playing with Janun back then. Yeah. That time. so he travel a lot. And yeah. Yeah. So I mean, at that point, did you guys when you got together and. you know were on the same page with jazz and stuff was there a thought to make some stuff and bring that into the scene there because was, no yeah. one was doing that yeah no one was doing that so uh, we also had plans to do that but uh you can see we just did some covers first mm-hmm. we were trying to get acquainted with jazz that sound a new sound yeah you can see and yeah uh no but we didn't really work on anything back then yeah yeah because Amir had his album out so we, he wanted us to even play with him along with him like so you play some kind of, live shows with him and stuff i think we played one or two live shows mm-hmm. and uh, with his uh, doing his songs and mm-hmm. a couple of jazz covers and stuff mm-hmm. and uh, but we never really got down to making it because of everyone kind of being tied up again yeah. Amir it's tour a lot to back then mm-hmm. he was playing session also with a lot of bands yeah 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 of ours vital signs yeah. and something like that and, yeah. and so was this guy yeah Gumby. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. So, I mean, at that so as a working musician, what was your bread and butter at that time? Was it just shows where you teaching as well? It was shows and I was teaching too. Like I was teaching even even in schools, you know, teaching music, but it wasn't kind of this, what I really wanted to teach. It wasn't mm. authentic music mm. lessons, you know. It, mm. it was more like just teaching the basics, rudimentary stuff and right. And did you I mean was there an interest from the students did you find or was it just there was the quite a few i'd say like must must back then must have been around say 25 30% but everyone wanted to be a singer back then you know yeah. yeah yeah if i go up and sing like i'll have my album out and mm. people will follow me and mm. they had that stardom thing in their mind yeah. so i'd kind of break it down and explain to them what music is and how you get into it and mm-hmm. i mean it's challenging to build that interest from scratch i mean it has to be there from the students exactly exactly side, yeah, from there yeah you can't instill that into them you see that yeah so i mean tell us more about like how i guess it's been oh. a real for 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 people like you and for you know the session players in general it's been quite a struggle you know with the scene basically it seems like it's been on a downward trend over over years you know with more electronic music being made mm-hmm. and with people not requiring real musicians, real musicians on yeah, their exactly. albums anymore it so how so how is that like what have you seen like at what point did that change really start coming in you know that change started coming i'd say like maybe mid 2000s mm-hmm. 
Yeah. So we make some songs. Exactly. Computers right. started getting exactly. better. Started, you know, <laughs> like, oh, everyone became a musician overnight. You know? Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. They were like, oh, okay, we're taking samples of a keyboard part, yeah, ripping exactly. off parts from there, joining, pasting them together, and putting it in. You know, I've got my keyboard solo. I got everything down. And yeah. But there was always a difference. You could see those glitches in it. Like, how do you deal with that? It was like, kind of a, it's like your own bread and butter is being impinged upon by like uh, a machine. A machine which doesn't have any soul, kind of, and being co- operated by people who don't know who don't necessarily. Have no, exactly, who have no knowledge about the, yeah. the instrumentation and. Yeah. Okay, like you can understand if you're doing or if you're using a machine. Yeah. Right now, I use machines. I mean, I use uh, VSDs. I use programs. I use DAWs mm. and mm. whatever. And mm. but the thing is, I'm a musician, so I know exactly how to arrange music. And likewise with you, if you're sitting yeah. on doing it. But mm. most people weren't musicians back then. Yeah. They were just kind of, I'd say, avid listeners, maybe. Yeah, yeah. And even listening, I mean, I I don't know. Not even listeners. Yeah. Listening to maybe just what's on the charts. What's on the charts, exactly. You know, Um, because the the whole um, trend and culture of, you know, having a record collection or a CD collection... Uh And then you go over to someone's place and they have some different albums and you're like, oh, what's, what's this? Or they show you something. Sure. And then you discover more and more music. Now yeah. it's more like, I feel like driven by everything's on the charts, on YouTube, it's viral. So the taste is kind of more homogeneous now, it seems. Yeah, no. um, even though there's more music out there it's now than yeah, ever exactly, before. Yeah. Right? I mean, you might even find good music within that, but it's really hard to find that. You know? but that's not really surfacing right up there. Yeah. So, yeah. So you've got to dig deep into that and then pull it out from. Yeah. And then I guess, uh, so again, so I'd heard, it's funny, like, you know, we would go to these jams and there's oh. always guitar players, there's always, always, always some drummers, some bass players, vocalists. You never but find keyboard there's players. never any keyboard never any players. Keyboard player, exactly. And always we would have these jams and we'd be like, yeah, keyboard, Why yeah, yeah keyboard there's no keyboard. Yeah. And someone or the other, Jasir or whoever would mention, mention oh. hey, John Savile. John, exactly. John. And yeah, I'm like, I who is this John Savile? Exactly. I need to yeah, meet, exactly, yeah. meet this John Savile. And then eventually we... And I remember we, the first time I come here, it was right down here in this basement. Yeah. Uh, whatever. And uh, you, you were just building a show. This was yes. back then. You, just, you were starting off. This yeah. was a couple of years ago, I think. It's four, like five years now. Four or five years back. Yeah. Yeah. That was the first time I ever came here with someone. And... Uh, mm-hmm. So that's when I met you and then you had already heard about me, I think. And so you yes. told me to come around and... I had met you. Actually, I met Jesse, I think, Jesse, before yeah, exactly, I yeah, met you. Yeah. Uh, Jesse had come. I think Jesse some... had brought me here, honey. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So he brought me here and, and exactly that's when I met you. And then we just started coming around. And then, of course, Anas being a very old friend of mine. Yeah. And he once you had set up the studio, the, the other jamming portion... Mm-hmm. Then Anas had called me and said, why don't you just come over to ha- Aleph and Jam? And yeah. that's when I started like, sticking around here. That's when Jasser and everyone were there that night. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and then actually what happened was uh, Zishan Mansoor. Zishan Mansoor was here from Islamabad. Exactly. From Islamabad. He was, he was working on the Malan, Malan, Malan Party, Party record. Oh, yeah. uh, but obviously, you know, working on an album, it takes time and it's time. a long process. Um, so in between the album sessions, he was... Itching to do something, something else. And exactly. you two had met at some jams. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah, I think that's blues kick together. I think I just saw him as yes. and Aziz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, and plus, he had this real interest in, uh, in jazz. In you know, jazz, jazz yeah, chords, yeah. introducing yeah, kind of similar taste exactly. Yeah, yeah introducing like that kind of vocabulary into the mainstream in the some mainstream, way. Yeah. Um, which is and when we form Sirkwa, we were kind of, we were taking yes, across lines, you see. Exactly. So Zishan and Zishan, Zishan Ali. Zishan Ali. Uh, they uh, were the ones that both sat together and mm, kind of crafted the songs. Yeah. And yeah. Kind of tailored it. And so tell us about that. Like, how was it for you to come into that Okay, that, uh, was really, that was really nice. I really enjoyed that. But mm. it was, of course, because of the COVID that ruined everything. Where everyone had to split up and go back to their hometowns. And, yeah. You know, and but how was the process of arranging, the, process of arranging the, the, the music was... Oh, that was a fun thing. I remember we it was pretty much right done in jams, right? Pretty much done in jams. It, all in jams. Yeah. It's all in, done in jams. Like we uh, didn't really sit down and make up a part or whatever. It was just mm-hmm. came out spontaneously. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And whatever we liked, uh, I, I remember we even record our jams. Mm-hmm. So, so how was the experience arranging uh, those tunes with Surkhab? Okay, like what we used to do, we used to just, I remember Shani was here, Jasser, and we used to come every morning or afternoon yeah. and we would just sit down and jam the songs, mm-hmm. you know, like live, real time. Yeah, Zishan would play his harmonium and start up some melody, and we would just 
mm-hmm. kind of fall over the chords. And yeah. So that was the fun part because we were like jamming on it, you know, like mm. solos would be different every time and yeah, whatever. Yeah. And but had you done any project with a classical uh, Eastern kind of singing before? No, that was my first project with an Eastern classical singer. Mm. Mm. So how is that for you? Like, was it easy to integrate your jazz and blues into that? Yeah, it was that? totally easy because he was kind of very open to mm. the singer, I mean, Zishan himself. Mm. And, mm. and he was like an improviser himself. Yeah. Yeah, and so uh, I didn't find any issues with that at all. Yeah, and it it feels like because the interesting thing about Surkhwa for me is oh. a lot of jab be a fusion hota, oh. you know, like oh. uh, other bands have have tried it in Pakistani oh. scene before. The choral vocabulary that they're using is very rock and pop centric. The choral, yeah, 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 yeah right, from right, the right, Western right. point oh, of view. Exactly. Uske upar wo rags fit kar rahe hote, whereas those rags demand other flavors and colors. Other flavors. Like, like now we had more tuba, so I'd say kind of going to one of the jazz sub-genres like of it. As yeah. yeah. Kind of smooth jazz kind of a feeling. We had, we had something, but it was based on that. And mm-hmm. blues. Mm-hmm. And a lot of blues. Like a mm-hmm. bluesy. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's where I think your experience and exposure and interest, you know, really comes through. Comes because through. Exactly, it, it yeah. gives the right basis to properly then explore all those areas you know that, that you like areas. playing in so um, that for me personally is one of my uh, most the projects that I'm most proud of because I feel like exactly yeah, I remember is, your, yeah you used to be like lit back then you know like, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, 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 uh, it's, it's one of the most unique things that I think has happened out of Alif but coming back to your experiences oh. you know in the industry um I mean, tell us a little bit about the difficulties. I mean, what are the things that, you know, ground, grind, grind your gears about? <laughs> about Crowd my gears. Yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> Up his gears. I highlighted exactly this year. It took a long while for it to get back into shape, you know, and come back. Yeah. Exactly. Okay, we had, I see like in the 90s, it was totally a total different area. We had a lot of professional jealousy. Mm. And uh, I'd say kind of like racism something just because me mm. being... Yeah. yeah. Different green Christian. Exactly. And of course, I don't think that way. I'm yeah. a human first. That's what yeah. I am, you know. And Absolutely. Exactly. Especially when you're playing music. Exactly. You can't playing be music thinking. and anything. You know? I, mean, yeah. I mean, to kind of get along in life, you yeah. have to think that way, you know, in those yeah. lines, you know. And yeah. So, did you feel like, you know, it was because other people didn't have as much knowledge and they felt jealous about that or I think the knowledge it was basically the knowledge and the playing you see because mm. they couldn't play like that too, and, uh, so they were kind of jealous so they had a lot of people coming to me to learn from me mm. and mm. but you know they kind of put me like kind of sidelined me yeah and, and took the limelight took the limelight you know yeah, and yeah. unfortunately it's a consistent feature I think a small way of thinking you know, like uh, the ego yeah and yeah, and I mean, what do you think is 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 the solution to this kind of thing? Like, did it? Did you? I mean, obviously, it must oh. have really pissed you off, it, right? It, like, did, it, it, did, it, did you it, allow it to get really, to you? I used to be really angry at yeah. times, you know. And yeah. I was I was going through manic depressive phases myself, hmm. you know. But then I started working on myself, hmm. Hmm. you know, analyzing my own. Flaws in a job because yeah. yeah, I mean, uh, no one's perfect. I mean, has something in it. So I started analyzing myself and growing out of that, you know, yeah, that kind of thinking. I said, yeah. oh, I'll still keep on doing what I have to do, whether I'm put down or whatever, you know, yeah, yeah, to achieve my goals, stay mm-hmm. rather than driving myself crazy or whatever, you know, absolutely. And often, I mean, I firmly believe these things happen because there's something for us to learn, it's something right? exactly, you know, and you know, like I could be really good at something and people get jealous of that thing but maybe that so see, ability or like, skill has given me yeah. an ego as well and I exactly. think of myself as it, better exactly you know yeah. yeah yeah so I guess it's sort of even kind of helped me with myself you know like yeah. kind of trying to become a better human hmm. and that, that, that has been my aim I'd say that's the same issue what a lot of people have to look into I mean to yeah. overcome that problem hmm. Hmm. like I mean uh, look at your own mind look, look, become introspective yeah and and, I mean, as a teacher, like, oh. I, I I think a lot of the um, thing to blame here is, is like upbringing of, of people and not up, being up taught, 
not being taught especially at home at home you know at home ghar mein ho kya dekhte ghar school mein kuch bhi aap sikha lo lekin ghar mein agar ek cheez dekh le exactly yeah so but as a teacher do you think you've had any kind of way to influence or or to coach you know young musicians in that direction of not having an ego about things and just constantly learning i i keep in uh, uh, that's one of the primary goals actually you know yeah. like i tell them okay you just got to be empty yourself you know hmm. just take a cup empty the cup and yeah. you got to pour water into it you know and yeah yeah and uh, and do do you find ke like when in your students obviously there must be some uh, that are better than others more yeah, skilled true, or gifted true, exactly yeah so do you f- see this issue come up at that early age where if someone's more gifted that other children get jealous of that person or try to put them down or i've, I've like that. seen that too i've seen that too and also but it might not show it hmm. exactly in a way like you know like a really in a, an aggressive way man but yeah. i do see that and then i try to yeah coach them coach them like bring the weak ones out and tell them this is where your weaknesses i try to point out their weaknesses and that's what you got to work on that area mm-hmm. you know it might not even be a physical thing it might be something mental inside and mm-hmm. internally yeah a kind of a hurdle which you got on an obstacle but you got to kind of yeah. walk your way around you know and yeah yeah i mean so to achieve w- that absolutely i mean i think one of the things is like as you get older you realize that no matter how much knowledge that you gain it's really about your personal skills with other people that gets you your interaction respect like, or gets respect, you you know yeah. work or gets you anything you know you have to be able to work with people your communication exactly you know and how you work uh, work with other people that's yeah. very important you know? and respect milta hai dene se exactly dene se milta hai exactly like, how long do you no one is other, like uh, respect each other and हाँ ऑफन ये हो जाता है लोग इंटाइटल हो जाते हैं इंटाइटल हो जाते हैं उनको कुछ शायद अपॉर्चुनिटी या ब्रेक मिले और दे बिकम यू नो पॉपुलर बिकम स्टार्स और समथिंग एंड देन दे थिंक एक्चुअली दैट्स विदाउट यू डोंट नेचुरली हैव टू नेम एनीवन बट लाइक आई हैव आल्सो सीन पीपल हु आर काइंड ऑफ बैलेंस्ड यू नो हु हैव रीच दोस हाइट्स बट दे आल्सो स्टिल द सेम या या But do you think the industry in some kind of perverse way rewards this kind of uh toxic behavior like those that kind of get the op- like for example wow. you know uh, uh we've seen so many examples of a band starts getting popular but then because yahan culture hai vocalists ko zyada you know upar karne ka to vocalists ko star bana dete hain baki sab pe attention nahi aati and then like that vocalist if he is the kind to let it get to its head to his head ha they like cut off fire the rest of the band okay. and they'll then hire other session players for really cheap money, cheap money and start exactly. doing the same Or songs that other people wrote just backing crack some yeah exactly, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so okay, this has happened so much that's also the industry to blame for not kind of educating the public and Is also a, for like like, like, like yeah. they'll just hire yeah. the vocalist huh. for a show and they won't even hire the rest of the band that hire, made him uh, exactly you know? like you see most of these tours like when they're going abroad yeah. they'll take bands that are just one band session band playing with everyone you know yeah. so the vocalist is not really getting that kind of backup they need yeah. the background and so they can't grow they're they just, can't grow they get exactly. popular yeah. based on something yeah. and then they keep regurgitating that thing exactly. because yeah. the people that help them make that are no longer in the picture and like you see because you can in pakistan like music wasn't part of our culture like it's only now or been the past 20 years i'd say that people have started getting into it like through social media the internet i guess the genres have expanded the genres have expanded yeah. so i mean uh, so like most of the people go towards vocalists like uh, lyrics basically not even yes. vocalists but not even the melody but lyrics hmm. like you have something like uh, written on love or hmm. on kind of heartbreak yeah those things sell Absolutely there isn't that appreciation isn't of that appreciation the musicality of musicality right now yeah but things have changed i've noticed this with surkwa like when we played this lahoti mellow mm-hmm. and i've seen the response of people like I mean, we are actually soloing and playing everything they were actually into it for the music yeah it Not takes just the vocalist i yeah. mean i think with the smartphones the and smartphones access the people have kind of you know, they know what's happening now i mean they know yeah and I, 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 you know it's one of those things where i feel the industry has gone one way where um you know everyone knows and all the marketers know ke ye certain simple jo melodies hain ye big 
bikengi simple Be- bikengi. catchy melodies bikengi and they don't want to take risks as they don't want to take risks, risks and yeah. more than that they think of the audience as in some way dumb right dumb. And they're they playing are, to they the dumb audience. But they aren't. You know? And they aren't dumb. They're getting I've smart. Music, I've played music for us. I've played music for people who never even expect would be listening to music. Yeah. I've, played, they've kind of, I've seen the way it affects their psyche and everything. You know, and Bilkul. the way they enjoy it. Bilkul. And we underestimate that. Like for I'm example, just playing instrumental. Exactly. You know, yeah. Like, like in, the, in the film world, like Christopher oh. Nolan's films, for oh. example. Oh, okay. Like you see Inception. Yeah, yeah, For right, example. Right. And, oh. you know, Interstellar. These are high concept films, but oh. taken to the mass market. And he's kind of proven that people aren't dumb. They like, aren't. you know, these are complex structured films with time going forward, backward, backward different exactly, layers of yeah. things. But the audience can follow along in a two and a half hour film. They still get the point at the end and they're affected by it. They're affected, exactly. Right? And that's on a mass market. They may, he's making billions of dollars. Yeah, exactly. Right? So similarly, I feel in music, we need to have some kind of musical revolution where we are... making the complex things jo hamare dil se aari you know not exactly, yeah. overly complicating anything but what we actually want to play huh. the problem is people kind of cut themselves at the knees and they're like acha logo ye nahi samajh aayega this is too complicated uh, know, insecure or something mm-hmm. scared of maybe because financial difficulties or whatever so yeah like, i need to do something that sells exactly, yeah. you know but so the no point is like, why are you as what? an artist getting those ideas if you're going to put them aside put them aside exactly like, where, yeah. then where's your creativity you know so this is a big problem and i think at least with surkhwab i think we were able to overcome that overcome all that exactly yeah. and of course working with you too that's another i mean we have the producer you just gave us you said you just do what you want you know like <laughs> yeah, you start showing set up play with cats i mean if you, you have are, players like you, you and come, shani like, like you were playing with your cats and all that stuff <laughs> you are exactly you know and, मुझे वो हिट्स बनाई नहीं आती या ये वो बिकॉज वो उसी माइंड सेट से थिंक कर रहे हैं कि मेरा इसमें काम क्या था लाइक यू नो टका टक केम हेयर फॉर एग्जाम्पल एंड एंटायर एल्बम यू नो दे वे दे वॉन्टेड टू एंड देन समटाइम्स पीपल डोंट यू नो एसोसिएट मी विद दैट प्रोजेक्ट बिकॉज इज अपली ऑल दीज गाइज इज डूइंग राइट बट द पॉइंट इज आई एम नॉट ट्राइंग टू मेक माई सेल्फ इम्पॉर्टेंट हेयर बट द पॉइंट इज यू नीड a producer's job is to understand how to make the artist thrive and um make them comfortable That's so that they that, that, uh, exactly yeah. so that yeah. they can do wo jo unke andar se aa raha the job is not to tinker with what they're doing what they're doing to yeah, put exactly. your own like aesthetic into it now that's not what i'm trying to do at least that's not you the kind of you think about something only on me okay like if, Like if I tell you I don't want this part, or I don't want to play with my band. Okay, you change this, and then you'll do it exactly. Yeah, but I mean the you most. You do it on your own. You know yeah, I mean? I mean as like uh, you know, I may have some input where because huh. of my experience, I might say yeah, okay, input, okay, of course, is always. Yeah, yeah, like you know, these things are like sub key ideas. Pot me are in, but sometimes but ideas sometimes clash. Or not, but exactly. Huh. But sometimes you can mentally block too. No? Yeah, sometimes block, less exactly. is more. Like, less is more. You know? Exactly. You can't have a. Less is always more. Yeah, exactly. you can't have a, yeah. a key solo happening when the vocalist is also singing. Singing, yeah. अच्छे से chord बजाओ पीछे रो और अपनी जगह पे आओ. Exactly. But yeah. यही काम है. तो ऐसे tone change कर लो ये कर लो exactly. You know, तो वो होता है इसमें. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I'm glad you felt that you were able to kind of. you know do your thing here cuz no, that's no, exactly point. yeah that's something like you need to i mean we need like a uh, people like you in the industry you know no, i'm very kind to say right, that but like, no i'm i'm serious about that cuz i wish you were there like <laughs> when well, i do know, wish that I, exactly, i had a chance exactly. to produce you know when you were with amir zaki and gambi oh, exactly, and you yeah, guys right, were right, jamming right, i mean right, there's no exactly, yeah. there's no real document of that like no, there's like, there nothing real document you know, you know? Back then, we didn't have all this technology, though, where you could just record it so easily. You know. And yeah. There were no cell phones back then. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and the other thing is, there's a lack of spaces to get to meet people like to you. meet people, especially for the younger. For the younger. Obviously, yeah. you teach, but in the 
professional kind of playing environment. That's why we do the Juma Jams, right? The Juma Jams, yeah. This is our, yeah. So, different lineups can come yeah, together. I've seen so many of my students coming here. Exactly. You know? Yeah. Exactly. This is, this is nice. Like, I felt nice here. I, mean, I saw so many people coming around. I said, that's good. You know, like, new faces and... Yeah, and there should be that. Again, it's, it's, it's helpful for us, more experienced people, to kind of play with the younger lot. Play with the younger lot, exactly. And to, you know, them asking questions, I'm using my guitar or my pedal board asking how this works. Exactly, yeah. And maybe someone comes and sometimes often they use my gear in ways that I haven't used. That you are, exactly. Like, and then I'm learning yeah, from yeah, them, yeah. you know. It, it it works both ways, you see. Like you can do buds run stone. I mean, like, uh, absolutely, absolutely. So, what's what's uh, your plans now for the future? Like, what's happening in the world of John Savile? Like, do you have your own compositions that uh, you? I have a couple of instrumentals that I'm doing. I mean, just what I haven't really. But I want to sit down and do them now. You know, and we should absolutely do that. And I'm well, of course, I'm going to do it with you. On you know, <laughs> I'm going to sit here. But I, it's a thing that I feel comfortable working with you also, and. Mm-hmm. No, but I think that yeah. kind of... So I want to get down and restructure them. So obviously I'll have even you play on them. And I'd love to. I'd love to get uh, this guy on us on bass. Mm-hmm. This guy on us. <laughs> 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 but yeah, I mean, I think it's important to... Like, I think... Wow. A lot of artists who have a lot of creativity wow. end up not showing it because they get insecure, okay, this is not ready... This won't be heard. This won't, this be, won't popular. be heard. Exactly, yeah. That's but the point yeah. is, like, when you put it out, sometimes, you know, like the great painters, sometimes they weren't exactly, yeah. known until after they died. I'm not saying we have to wait they till our... That guy who shot himself, exactly, that painter. Yeah, exactly. He didn't know. He, oh, yeah, but, you know, the point is, yeah. your job is just to put it out there. Out there. Even if one person listens yeah, and gets that inspired. That may have happened with me, though. It may have happened with me also in the past. Like, yeah. you know, I was kind of apprehensive about... Hmm. For, these reasons huh? yeah yeah and I mean so actually take us to that point like what oh. what was going on in your head when, when when you were thinking like that okay like there was a time I remember in the uh, mid two th- early mid 2000s when I formed mm-hmm. my own band mm-hmm. with Jesse on bass uh, on guitar he was on guitar and he had composed some songs mm-hmm. so, so Jesse is John's that. brother actually yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> okay so he composed these songs with a friend of his who used to work with him and he mm. was in a bank back then and stuff so mm. and uh, so I heard the song I said they sound pretty decent you know so let me arrange it for you and he said yeah that would be lovely and yeah. I said okay why not we just form this band together I'll help you. so they were kind of wow you know John's going to be playing with us and mm-hmm. we got in a drama and stuff we, we even did one or two gigs I think mm-hmm. and so we worked but then we had the same problem with the industry trying to market it and yeah. people putting us down yeah and yeah or us work the channels ka the channels ka jor, the, you had to pay like a, kind of a, you know four or five lakhs just to run your song yeah that's what I heard we tried, we tried yeah. taking a song there how perverse like you have how to perverse. pay money they should be paying you we went to producers we went to people they, okay like mind you make a video this is a song or song yeah. sounds good okay the video will cost you so much I said well, shouldn't I mean uh, how about a sponsor yeah yeah yeah. Oh, I know it can't be done and all that. And, it's going to and, be well, well, and the reason they gave was the kind of music you were making? Not kind of, uh, I don't know, just... Uh, I was even open to even change stuff around, mm. you know. Did that music have, like, vocals on it? Or was it had vocals, total vocals yeah. on it. I'm just, uh, you could say pop music, or more kind mm. of the Western-oriented pop mm. music. Or fact, English I'll, 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 I'll make you listen to it sometime. I'll, right. Next well, time around, I'll I'd love to. Around. Yeah. But was it in Urdu or English? Urdu. Okay. So, yeah, then it's strange. That they didn't go for it. Yeah, the singer was a good point. Was even the lyrics were kind of what sells in this market. Or yeah. Uh, so he had written it that way you know, and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But I don't know. Just like hmm. we weren't getting any sponsors in the opening. So we came to the point where we said, okay, we'll just make the video ourselves. You know, yeah. kind of. Mm-hmm. Um, we were even out for that, but no one wanted to run it and stuff. So they kind of just died with it. Then we died with it. We all kind of split up and... Hmm. Hmm. So at that point, did you, what did you learn from that experience? Did you think that uh, I'm going to do this, 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 i am going to do this 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 i am going
Exactly. And down worse. And then there's also, then there's also my session thing had stopped that time. I hadn't been sessioning, so I was just sitting at home, like, mm. doing nothing. Mm. You know, music. So it was driving me crazy, like sitting between four walls and just. That's that's difficult. That was a difficult point. You know, it was a bad phase too, but yeah, which was also a good thing in a way because it made me kind of get in touch with myself, connect with myself. Hmm. Hmm. And so, did your through this time did 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 listening to music give you like the solace? Like because you know when we're growing up. and we're teenagers and you oh. go through your first breakup and your oh, exactly. your first thing then <laughs> sort of music as music, musicians music, yeah, music yeah, exactly but it kind of so suits you or uh, did that it, it that still emotion. you know like oh, i find ke yeah. ab because i'm producing so much <laughs> i don't listen to new stuff as much but i try to because of being a producer exactly. yeah you like to, you know, i just you want to give my ears empty, a break yourself empty exactly yeah. yeah but you know Do you still have that element where if you're getting down depressed, you just put on some music to chill out? Actually, I don't really have. I think I've even crossed that stage of getting depressed now. But I mm. do love listening to music. Or I just love playing also. You know, if mm. I see a keyboard anywhere or whatever, and I just yeah, I'll play, I'll pick, see a guitar, pick it up, and I'll yeah. start tinkering around with it. And yeah, and it just brightens keep, the day. I keep listening to music a lot. I listen to music every day. I listen to new music, modern mm. stuff, and mm. Mm. Uh, so it does elevate me. It does. So I'm I'm like a. definitely a minor chord person you know oh, so I, i find like um more towards the dark uh, yeah i know because oh. i don't know because it's it's hard to know exactly why but it feels like when you listen to major music it feels oh. most of the time that whoever made it is trying to sell some feeling of happiness or something or some positive thing which they're not really feeling you know because for me uh-huh. a lot of the more convincing music comes from when people are the minor in bass like not in a, in a great space like you see even the blues okay the minor blues and major blues you have more the minor blues that kind of is really yeah. from yeah in there you know and yeah i mean and the really really interesting music is uh-huh. is what's able to use both yeah Right, yeah, take exactly. you in both If places. If you listen to new modern jazz fusion and stuff. Yeah, like but take you both places authentically. Authentically. Okay, ये नहीं कि first major feeling ah uh, all happy. They're not forcing it in. Them. Yeah, exactly. exactly. But here it kind of exactly. Yeah, they take a major chord progression, a huh. one four five progression, and okay, it's all yeah. majors, you know. And so as far as the session work you've done, do, oh. have you had to, like, do you feel often that in session work you have to play things that you're not feeling, or? You sometimes allow yourself the sometimes that because I I'd say it's just, just like a job okay, you can yeah. be working in whatever environment like a job yeah. or something so if you're looking at okay kind of to make ends meet yeah then you do it hmm. you're still doing your thing at the end of the day but that's work yeah I played with this guy Najam Sharas too mm-hmm. with him I had a lot of space he said you just play what you want you don't play my songs the way they are hmm. so you play what you want and hmm. and that works so I uh, I enjoy playing with him he was a musician himself and a good singer and yeah. stuff so So your but your session career has it been mostly uh-huh. playing live or on recordings? Uh, live and recordings, but it was mostly live. I'll say, I'll mm-hmm. say about seventy percent live, and I mm-hmm. did some recordings also. On and the recording bands. works for like for jingles and things, or for I did maybe one or two jingles, and of course that too at Amir Zaki. Right. And and recordings mm-hmm. uh, for for bands for bands I mean, so for bands like did, keyboard solos and right. Did you get credited for them? Uh, Yes, I did get tried for one or two bands. Some I didn't. ये भी एक मरा मसला हुआ ना लाइक because I I realized yeah. that yeah. even in the West, yeah. um, like now with Rick Beato's channel, um, okay, he's made. Uh, have you do you know of Rick Beato on YouTube? Oh, Rick Beato. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I do so on his him. channel, he he like you know yeah, yeah, one yeah. of the cool, funny things uh-huh. that he's mentioned. Like if you see uh, the credits of an album, uh-huh. and you see some. famous session player thanked uh-huh. first in the first line then you know if for instance is a drummer that's thanked uh-huh. then it's for sure that you know that okay, drummer so has played on the record and on the, the record. band drummer has not played the band drummer has not but <laughs> that guy hasn't got formal credit formal he's credit. just been thanked right <laughs> exactly thanks thanks exactly yeah exactly so yeah but i was funny i know exactly and yeah, i didn't realize this yeah. until oh. very recently as yeah, a producer yeah, yeah, i realized fact, true true that makes sense yeah. you know as a producer i realized bands are coming in and they're not necessarily some bands i'm not going to name yeah. who yeah i know but you know of them exactly some bands they can't bands, yeah. play things 
correctly and they then you get the they have session to... positions or exactly playing for them to ye bada hota hai aur ye ek ek tarah se acha bhi hai it's work for the oh, session exactly, player exactly yeah but i think it's it also you know, it's unfortunate cheating. that yeah. yeah it's kind of cheating, kind of cheating you know? it is kind you're of cheating you're lying to yourself you're lying to yourself you're living in denial yeah yourself. and you're, you're selling, like, uh, selling an image selling an image okay, this is the band this is the lineup i can't do it i can't yeah. back it up you know it's weird it, it is weird um but kya kare it's, it's what we're dealing with <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i think um so aaj aaj kal you're teaching at arts council i'm teaching the arts council here so uh, how how is that so, oh that's going pretty good and the environment is very good there the people are nice and like training the teachers and yeah a couple of students are into it and they yeah. got a good kind of uh, what do you call it a uh, program program going on yeah how many students come to you right now i've got about two or three only right now but okay. it's also i'm doing like i'm doing the third year like uh, the three years as the three year called trimester mm-hmm. so it's like three trimesters right so you're teaching so somewhat experienced so students so most experienced students yeah. they've already got their hands on experience mm-hmm. i'm teaching them i'm just treating, teaching them the elements of like rock jazz blues funk and all that you know so what's and your approach do you do you play some like standards for them or do you just show them right now i'm just teaching them a lot of exercises the blues skills mesolarian skills and you know like all the skills and your modes mm-hmm. and modes and how to go into it and then i give them song standards along with it and mm mm-hmm. and what do you blues. what do you find like how's the standard of the students okay this will take some time because it's also the listening so i give them a lot of listening material like mm. the homework which you have to listen to a lot of stuff mm. and so it but they are getting towards that you know and then do mentor them a lot like play for them yeah. you know so they want to play it just the the thing i'm doing i said no it's a step by step process you know <laughs> how you, you can't, can't just, just jump there. you can't just jump there i said you can jump there i'll show you a rip off something when i'm playing but uh, but fazla ne hoga you're going to fazla ne hoga because your me then you're not you also yeah you know you can this again this this brings me to something which is huh. common aajkal like especially with guitar players huh. because of youtube you know people can oh, learn yeah. some really complex yeah, words or so sweep picking sab kuch ho raha hai but you start jamming with them play them a little bit of a they're tera lost. chord they're, lost. they're completely they're lost. lost completely lost i've seen that so it's it's a strange phenomenon where the technical ability is there but the listening isn't there okay this is what i do with my students now. i'll certainly start jamming like for instance we were jamming i started off jamming or yeah i'll play a chord set up like i know chord mm. progression mm. and play along okay so what's that chord was so this when i'm so i go into ear training then with them and yeah you know, how do i identify the chords and yeah yeah so yeah this 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 phenomenon of people learning crazy virtuoso jobs but not being able to follow along in a jam situation is is really interesting and quite alarming in a way because for me i don't have those jobs but i can jam you know and for Likewise, me like to be it's, con- job, it's yeah. like it's like if music is a language you need to be able to learn to communicate, speak, talk, speak and communicate as opposed it's to like just learning speak, the dictionary it's like basically uh, don't use big words where they don't fit in you know? yeah exactly <laughs> that's, that's it's the same thing it's that ha usra socha jaye to bahut acheeb se baat hai wahi baat ho gaya so what would you say what's your advice to um, you know, musicians that are trying to learn the language of music you know what I'd to focus say, on okay i say okay first thing come to joma jams <laughs> and sit with experienced musicians <laughs> <laughs> yeah. learn something from them you know listen yeah. to them learn ask yeah yeah and in- it's it's okay to not play anything it's okay to not play anything exactly. it's okay just doing it. like even in a conversation right if someone exactly. not knowledgeable listening. or someone interesting is speaking you, you won't cut them you, off you rather listen yeah. you know and try to gain something absorb analyze it and whatever Bilkul. there are times when i don't play when i'm listening to even new musicians there might be someone uh, like uh, even a student guy might be coming yeah. playing but i'll stop playing and i'll listen to him, what he's doing and then i'll try to play a, tailor around bilkul bilkul to isra ke hone chahiye so yeah and i think honestly it's it's really about giving respect respect you know a lot of this kind of uh, just overplaying and being loud being too exactly yeah. comes from like an ego space where it's all about you it's all about you and, and you're, you're not, you're not giving respect you. to you're people around you respect to people exactly so so that's what i've seen with so I mean, with some people yes <laughs> okay, so i have that with ahmed zaki over that he used to play it really loud you know and yeah. times i've gone pull out his cable from his arm like you know <laughs> he came to fight him 
<laughs> that's so funny. But he was a player. I mean, he could play. So exactly. But still, when you're playing so loud, let's balance it. And then there were times when he told me, "Okay, you're loud now." Yeah, because I'm kind of getting back at you, man. For what yeah, but but you know, at that level, I think a bit of professional yeah. like bro, uh, kind of clashing. Clashing more. Also, also, exactly, also yeah. they expected. Yeah, that's expected, and you, and you can handle that also. You can see yeah, how, exactly. Yeah. But uh, but no. someone doesn't know anything, and you're just like I mean, if he's just playing one track, like, I mean, if he's just playing one track, I mean, if he's just playing one track, exactly. So then you need to kind of yeah. open up. Yeah, but no, it's it's been lovely chatting with you yeah, and likewise, uh, yeah. learning from you and having you around. And uh, please follow Sir Khwab, research John Savile, and check out all the stuff he's done. And if you want to jam with them, come to the jam. Come to the jam. 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 That's where you'll meet me and get yeah. the jam with me yeah. and all of us here. Oh, or sign up exactly. at Arts Council. So, and, or sign up, exactly. Yeah. But uh, thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time. Allah Hafiz.